is Stitchless TV and I am very excited today. Today we are going to make this fantastic cropped 60s style jacket and guess what? Woohoo! It's got an amazing lining. This jacket is so easy. It's based on my raglan sleeve pattern, the same pattern that we use to make this vintage scarf top and the same pattern that we use to make this really simple raglan sleeve dress. The fur that we're using today is this fantastic, look at it. For the lining, being an 80s girl, I love an accent lining. And I've chosen today to use this wonderful African print. Now I use my raglan sleeve pattern a bit like how one would use a pattern block in that it's a basic template that we then modify again and again depending upon how we're going to use it. Okay, get your raglan sleeve pattern and just as it is, just cut one and that's going to become the back piece. Now we're going to have to change the pattern a little bit. What I want you to do is you've got to cut three inches away from that center front line because that's going to become the facing. Now this will be your one of your front pieces. You've got to cut two of them, but you have to cut one at a time. So just draw around it with the chalk and then cut it out with a blade. Very, very important. When you cut out the second of the front pieces, you have to do a mirror image of it. So flip it over horizontally so you get a mirror image of it. Now, if you're feeling a bit adventurous, you might want to do this. I want to create more fullness in my jacket. So this is my back piece. And in order to create fullness, I've got to slash it up, going straight up from the hem to the neck. And I've done four slashes for the back, two on either side of the center back. Now you could just have the flounce at the back, but if you want it at the front as well, then you're going to have to do it to the front too. Now when you cut fur, it has a nap. A nap means not having a little sleeve actually. Um, sorry. Um, a nap is when the fabric goes in a particular direction. So in this case, we've got a pile on our fur. Velvet has a pile on it. And some prints, they will have a print that goes in one direction. So all of that is called a nap. My pattern is the length that I want it to be. I don't need to add any extra for the seam allowance for the hem, but you might need to, so you just add your extra. But I want to talk to you a little bit about cutting fur. When you cut fur, you, you cannot just steam in and just go chop, chop, chop. It looks really unprofessional. You need the pile of the fur to sort of flap over the seam for it to look good. As a very lovely viewer pointed out to me, she said to me that whenever her grandmother used to cut out fur, she used to use like an old, you know those old blades that they used to put in the old shavers, we shoved it in there and closed it. So I'm gonna have a go with this scalpel. I have no idea if it's going to work, but I'm gonna have a go. Sleeves. Now all we have to do, well no, because we've got to do the lining, what we have to do now is we've got to cut out two of the sleeves. Now, as you can see, this sleeve is quite short. See, it goes like that on there. Now, as it happens, I want my jacket to have short sleeves because I think it's more like an evening jacket then. I'm going to add, because I think I want three quarter length sleeves, but I want a good turn up. So I am adding... 16 centimeters. So I've cut out one of my sleeves and then I just need, now we don't really need to do the flipping over business because in theory they're both identical, you see, they're both exactly the same. So just cut out another sleeve. 
Right, I've cut the last thing out in fur so I can get rid of the fur now. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so this might sound a bit complicated, but it really isn't, okay? So because my facing was fur, so we're losing that much from the lining section, but we need to actually attach it. We need two centimeters to attach. Now I'm losing an inch off the actual hem because my hem of my jacket is gonna be about an inch and a half and you need a little bit for movement. And then I'll just cut that out. But remember, we're just cutting two pieces, so we've got to cut down the fold, so we end up with two pieces. And then cut down there. And then this is just curving up a little bit here. Like that. Fold back the facing and then butt it right up to a fold. But do you know what they sometimes do with linings? They just allow a little bit extra, which they then pleat. So I'm going to allow a little bit extra as well. And I'm losing that inch off the hem because my hem gets folded up and then I've got a little bit extra as well. Now for the sleeves, because you're not going to see them at all, I can use any bit of the fabric um, and I'm going to cut it exactly the same as the actual pattern size because I've already cut my fur longer and with the hem it will all fit in perfectly. So that's everything cut out. We've cut out the fur and we've cut out the lining. So now we're ready to sew. Yay! I thought you'd like to have a look at what we have so far. So take a look at this. So these are the sleeves. So sleeves with the hem and the lining. And then if we come across to the back, so see how the back is bigger, the back lining is bigger than the actual back of the fur, but that's because we've made it a little bit bigger at the neck and then by the time it all gets attached, it all fits wonderfully. And then this piece here, if I move over that, so this is one of the front facings. So the front, uh, this is one of the front, sorry, this is one of the fronts and this is the front facing. So by the time that gets turned over and it gets attached then and the hem comes up, everything fits beautifully. <laughs> 